my name is Brandy. I'm with Brushed by Brandy. And this week I celebrated 50,000 followers on my Facebook page. And so I was able to say thank you to a lot of you with some giveaways this week, but I wanted to do a giveaway that benefited everybody. And what better to do that with than the giveaway of a video tutorial. So I'm going to be giving you a video tutorial. And the look that I'm going to be teaching you is how to do this barn wood look that I did on this dresser top here. Okay, so I'm going to demonstrate on these wood planks here. These are just, this is just plain old pallet wood that I have to practice on. I was practicing on with my um, branding iron on here, so ignore this. This is just scrap wood. Um, the first thing that I want to do on this, because it's open wood, I always recommend sealing off open wood with a coat of Dixie Belle Boss, or in this case, I'm going to use shellac. Um, this is spray shellac just from Zinser, and I'm using this just because it has a quick dry time for camera purposes. I'm gonna go ahead and spray my wood with my shellac. Make sure you wear a mask when you're doing this. It does, um, shellac is nasty stuff. You don't wanna breathe it. Okay, and then I'm gonna go ahead and dry my coat of shellac. Okay, once my coat of shellac is nice and dry, I just accelerated mine with a heat gun. I'm gonna take Dixie Belle French Linen, which is this nice grayish color, and that's gonna be the coat that I start with. So I'm gonna take my French linen and I'm just gonna apply a coat of it onto my wood that's been sealed. I'm using my Dixie Belle Mini. Now this coat, it's okay if it's not a super thorough coat. Because we are going to take this back with the Dixie Belle wood graining tool. I do not want this to dry. I want it to stay workable. So I'm going to wet it a little bit while I'm brushing it just to make sure it doesn't dry on me. Move my heat gun. Now, while my coat of French linen is still wet, I'm gonna take my wood graining tool. This is the wood graining tool by Dixie Bell. I've got my larger wood graining head on here. It does come in two sizes. I'm gonna use the larger one. And I'm gonna just place this at one side, of, one side of my plank. And with a little bit of pressure on the handle, using my fingers, I'm just gonna pull this and rock it. Now, the more you rock it, the more detail your grain's gonna have. Now my board is not perfectly flat because these are just inexpensive pallet boards, so I'm gonna go ahead and run this along this side here too, where my wood's not flat. I'm gonna go ahead and do this part too. Just so it all has some wood grain texture on it. And then I'm gonna come in the opposite direction with the same pressure on the head of the wood graining tool, and I'm gonna run it down this plank. Now this is a, a fairly light colored wood. Um, you could definitely do this over the top of an existing wood finish, an existing um, factory furniture finish. Um, in that case, you wouldn't need to seal the wood. You could just move on straight to your coat of French linen right over your factory finish top. Now I'm gonna let this dry and we'll come back. Okay, one more time, I'm just gonna throw my mask on and then I recommend to seal this once you have your paint. And the reason is because we're gonna glide the wood graining tool over the top of this again. And if it has a coat of sealant on it, that will help the wood graining tool to glide that much easier. I am using my shellac again because that's what I have out. Um, any of the Dixie Belle clear coats would also work to seal that paint off, but you wanna make sure you seal it because we want our next coat to glide really nice and easily. And now I'm gonna go ahead and dry this again. Okay, for my next step, I'm gonna use Dixie Belle Glaze, and this is Dixie Belle Glaze in black, and all of the Dixie Belle Glazes are tintable. So I actually want my glaze to be a little bit darker than the color that it comes. So I'm gonna take my glaze, and then I'm just gonna tint it with a little bit of Dixie Belle paint in Coffee Bean, which is this nice, rich, dark brown color. It does not take very much paint at all to tint your glaze, so I'm just gonna mix in my paint actually probably need a little bit of more glaze on there. Probably went a little heavy on the paint. It really takes very little paint to tint a glaze. And I'm just gonna mix those together so I have this nice, rich, dark brown glaze. 
Now I'm going to take one more time and I'm going to brush on a coat of my mixed glaze right over the top of my sealed paint. Now mine is probably not as dry as it should be, so I'm getting some streakiness, but that is okay. That will look good in my final look. So once I've got a coat of my glaze, it's messy, it's uneven, and that's all okay. I'm going to take my Dixvelle wood graining tool one more time. I'm gonna go ahead and wipe the paint off the head on it because I don't wanna smear that into this next coat. But for this coat, I'm going to start in the opposite direction that I did the last time. So I'm going to take it from this direction with a little bit of pressure on the head, and I'm going to run that through my coat of glaze now. And then once again, because this is an uneven piece of wood, I'm just going to go ahead and give myself another run right here on the edge just because I want some grain. But that exposes, now I've got three layers of color here. I've got the wood underneath, I've got the um, color of my Dixie Belle French linen, and then I've got my glaze color over the top. Let's go ahead and do this piece here. I'm gonna do a long stroke, pulling that back all along the way. Now, I wanna show you guys something. If you don't get a good run with your wood graining tool, you can take your glaze, Paint it back over the top, and you can go ahead and run it again. So if you need some practice, but I really like to use the wood graining tool with layers of color so that when I pull this back, and if this was a factory finish underneath, I would have my factory finish wood, my paint, and then my glaze. Okay, so from here, the last step on this look that I did on that dresser top is I'm going to use the Barnwood Plank Stamp. Now this is by Iron Orchid Designs and it will, you can stamp a Barnwood Plank design on a wood top. So the part I'm gonna use is I'm gonna use these little knots here. So they come on this backing and I just peel it off like that. And then I like to use this plastic piece to do my stamping on. I will take, let me move this wood out of the way so you can see what I'm doing. Get this piece out of here. So I will take the little piece of the stamp that I intend to use and I'm just gonna place it right here on my cellophane backing. And then I'm just gonna take a generic stamp pad. And I'm gonna go ahead and press my stamp pad onto my little wood knot that I plan to stamp. I'm just gonna work on one of these planks at a time so from here, while my ink is nice and wet, I'm gonna take this backing and I, I chose a spot where my wood graining tool had run where it looks like there would be a knot in my wood naturally. And I'm gonna take this knot design and I'm gonna place it right on top of the wood and then I'm just gonna press that down evenly onto my wood. And that added a knot design into my wood plank. Now the other stamp that I used on here is I also used this design here, which is just a little nail uh, mark, which looks like some separation in the planks. And I did the same thing for that. I would place that on my cellophane backing, take my stamp pad and press that onto my stamp. And then I can choose a place where I want it to look like my um, wood is separated into a plank and I will press that down onto my wood. And I can make as, as many of those as I like. So I'm gonna, I didn't use the other end, I'm gonna go ahead and go ahead and refill my ink and I'll do that last piece again. You really need to refill the ink in between individual stamps. I rarely get more than one stamp out of one fill of ink. And let me show you guys what that looks like. So that just made some edges on my wood here that looks like I have natural separation, a little bit of nail designs, and then of course my um, wood knot in my, in my wood design. 
So I'm going to take you guys back over to the top again so you can see what that looks like on a finished piece. And that's a little tutorial on how you can get a um, faux wood grain look either on a factory finish stained top or on a um, piece of raw wood.